mentioned you learned you started learning using the dinka alphabet why do you think um like for our children learning our local language is important for them in the diaspora the reason why the africa is believed to have lost its soul during this crumple and partition of africa is the movement they do not have one unifying language mm-hmm. if someone has annihilated your language if you if someone annihilate your language yeah then know yeah. that it has annihilated you sexually mm-hmm. and culturally. Okay? Yeah. Everything flow from a language. The highest paying skill on earth, yeah. after your education, you and I, yeah. is no longer the technical yeah. skill that will pay you. It is the communication skill. Yes. Okay? It is the communication skill that will enable you to convince someone and sign deal, contract, and things like that. Yeah. If they don't connect with their community, which is if they don't learn the language, the, you are technically lose those young people, that generation. It become annihilated yeah. from the whole system, from the social setup of African. So, what makes Dinka? Man, a Dinka is not just because it's a Dinka. It is the language. Okay. You and I for someone who does not know Kakwa and someone does not know Dinka, mm-hmm. say it for someone uh, different nationalities in Canada. We walk in the same street, we are the same people. Mm-hmm. The only things we differentiate ourselves is our language, which inform the culture, which inform our way of life. Okay? So, yeah. if we believe the next generation will continue to reflect our families, our cultural values, then they have to learn the language. Uh, is it easy in Canada, in Australia, in the U.S.? No, it's not a very easy task. I did uh, mm-hmm. some uh, analysis, not an official study, but informally okay. observation. Yeah. In 2018, yeah. uh, I mm-hmm. was concerned for my own children. Um, they become more comfortable expressing themselves in English. They speak Dinka, but you find someone mm-hmm. very fluent and communicate much easier than having to use Dinka and then they will blend in some few English words. But when they are speaking mm. English, it just flow without Dinka word. What does that tell you? You say that it uh, become fluent in that language. So we did an analysis with a friend of mine observation. We realized that kids learn the language through cartoon at very young age. They sit in front of a telly, there will be a, a cartoon program there. Whichever country you are in, there is a cartoon always for the kids. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. So I came to that realization that we need to do something. So I created actually what we call a Fritune network. <laughs> so a Fritune oh. is incorporated. So I had wanted to do animation to mimic because we cannot fold them. You cannot tell them, learn Kahua or no. You're going to have to make it acceptable to them. So when we realized kids were learning English first than our languages, because the question is, how come a child who does not go to school is sitting within the same four wall with me? Yeah. And in the family, we are speak, speaking Dinka, and that child is speaking English. Where did the child get it? And, and it was across the community in different houses, whether it is a Kakwa, a Moro, or a Bari, you know, it was the same phenomena happening. We realized it was the cartoons. And I think you would have made that. That similar observation could be replicated in the U.S. and Canada. So yeah. we realized, okay, these children 
Nothing connects out with them. You go to Sudanese functions, South Sudanese, you will not see young people. Nothing connects them. Because imagine someone is speaking the serious Kakwa terminology. The message will blow really nice, but the children will not get it because they are not connected because of the language. If we want our children to connect with, with us, they have to learn the language. It, it is a minor contributor. I will not say the minor, but it's a serious contributor to the sexual issues in the Western world, and particularly in, we are in Australia. Children okay. don't see why they connect with us. There was a study, official one, commissioned by the South Sudanese community here in 2019. Okay. They were asked, and this is what the children said. They said, we know what we want, but we don't see the sense of belonging connecting back with our community. You go to your function, you talk to yourself. Because they don't know the language. They un- feel they're not part of. So I-, I believe it's critical for the next generation if we want to maintain our sexual identity, which is very critical, which is very important. Yeah. Knowing, and this is one thing, learning to speak English, good English, is not a measure of knowledge. A child that speaks Kakwa doesn't mean is less advantaged than a child that speaks. Of course, the, the world run in English, so we want them to learn English. But a child who can speak Kakwa or Dinka or Nuer or whatever other language out of the 64 or other African languages is as intelligent as someone who speaks. And by the way, just for benefit of the listeners, children and people who speak multiple languages tend to be much clever in other aspects of sciences than those who don't speak. The same side of the brain where you learn the language is the same side of the brain where you learn mathematics. So if you think your child is going to be a a genius doctor, uh, a medical doctor, then you'll be better off learning additional language to English, which is your first language. Let your dialect be the first language let English be second language. I'm okay for English to be my second language. I don't even worry whether I have accents or not. It doesn't worry me. It doesn't limit me in any way. So let yeah. them learn their languages first. Yes. Yes. Okay. Be- because, you know, one thing is the communities like the um, Indian community here in Canada, for example, the Chinese, the Filipino, their children have no problem speaking the uh, the Tagalog, speaking Hindi, or speaking Mandarin or Cantonese. So maybe there are lessons for us to learn from that. So I've, I've scheduled a, a sit down with somebody from the Indian community. Maybe we can learn something from him. But it's something that we may look into because it, it like you mentioned, it's probably part of the reasons why we have social problems, right? Yeah. Okay. Um, so the other thing is also culture because language is the vehicle of culture. All those Dinka customs and traditions and, you, you know, I know wrestling is a big thing in Australia for you guys. Yeah. So how do you push that down to the children? Do the children go to the wrestling matches? That, that is a paradox, and, and you ask a, a good question. <laughs> I'm, seeing, I'm seeing a paradox, to, especially in the, among the Dinkas. There is a serious yeah. paradox here. If you see our children in Australia, I don't know in the U.S., but across, you see young girl boys are dancing. Serious Dinka dance, okay? Okay. They are dancing uh, our dances mm-hmm. in Dinka. But some of them don't speak Dinka. That's why I call it a paradox. Okay? Okay. They appreciate their dance. They are wearing uniforms, kind of. You would have seen those YouTube and social media share. Yeah. Yeah. So our children are enjoying the culture. In fact, when we go to function, they would rather prepare you talk less and let people perform more, dance more. Mm -hmm. It is a serious paradox. They enjoy those songs. And apparently, if you ask them what the songs mean, they would explain to you in English. Okay. So what it means, it means the children have a desire to learn if it is made attractive. 
It, it, it means the way we try to teach them is not attractive. So, yes, wrestling, you see those wrestling who used to be organized in Melbourne, young girl and boy would yeah. come, they will wear their uniform, they will be like the cheering squad, and they will sing the songs for their team in Dinka, and they will dance. You, you see? And they are doing that, they are TikToking on the Dinka dance, uh, Facebooks, social media, you see young girls and boys performing. Actually, they yeah. do it better than some of us who were there at home. Okay. Yeah, one of my guests, sorry for cutting you, one of my guests was a musician from Uganda. He's a big musician in Uganda called Romeo Odong. He, he's from the north, from Gulu. He sings in Acholi, in English, in Swahili, and even a little bit in Lingala. And he mentioned that maybe we get people from back home to teach our children virtually so that they can, because many parents are busy working, whatever, trying to keep the mortgage and all that. Do you think it's a good idea? So that they can get the language. If the parents are busy, then how would the children get online virtually? No one's gonna, children are being children. They need supervision. They need someone to log them on the computer. They said, hey kid, it is, it's, it's time. So, uh, the idea is great. It is how to implement mm-hmm. it. That is where I have the question. The okay. same sh- parents are the one that cannot find time to talk to the children in the same language. What mm. what will enable them to have time now to to outsource that responsibility to someone virtually? Because kid being kid during COVID, I tell you, I used to run online t- tutorial and I used to run it physically to to impact mm. because I want. He, the young generation in my community to learn some scientific skill. I want them to get into a STEM subject, science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. Mass tutorial. You see, children love it, but who failed them? It is the parent. They will always be an access, mm. uh, too busy working, or oh, that, 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 that. There will always be a reason, okay? They will never run out. Yeah. Am I saying what they do is yeah. not important? It is important, but at what priority? Do you put those children? It, it depends where you put your children in the order of priority, daddy. So yeah. the musician is correct. They, they, you, why children are not learning, not that people, there are no people who know the language. No, it is the commitment. And children could be, I, this is how I compare, and we all know what is accepted universally. They are just empty computer disks that need to be programmed, and you keep building the code as they grow. By the, it reaches yeah. a certain situation where inefficiencies crop up in a computer program. You see, if you mm-hmm. keep building the program up, it reaches a certain level where mm. it is over-optimized. It becomes inefficient. You stop. That's what happened to the children. It reaches a certain level where what you say will not matter anymore. So if you allow them to be programmed by the outside world, by the time they are 13, 15, it is very hard yeah. to break that code which they obtain outside. So if you put in your own code, at least you know yeah. what line of code you put in so you can debug it <laughs> anytime you yeah. want. So, so I, I guess the hardware is African, but the software is Western. That's it. That's it. Correct. <laughs> Correct. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. So w- one thing I noticed with the Indian community, for example, is they bring their grand, their grandmothers here. Yes. So the children spend more time with the grandparents who speak only Hindi, for example, and then the parents are busy looking for the dollars. Maybe it's something we can look into. Yes. Is Indian... Chinese and some even other African like South Africans do it a lot. Yeah. For our country, I don't know how it is in Canada. First, there was no diplomatic relation between Australia and South Sudan. It's now being established. The ambassador will be visiting Australia before the end of this year. Australia is combined with China. The whole Pacific uh, Asia, South Pacific has been combined together under one ambassador, Honorable Monday. In, in Beijing. Yeah. Now, yeah. hopefully, it may give us a chance. We have been having elders coming to visit, but it has always been difficult to justify someone coming because yeah. the country which is at war, and this is one thing why peace is important, and people in the diaspora should talk peace. Your, our parent, grandparent can come until there is peace because the moment your country is at war, 
people will not be given visas because the risk of them refusing to go back because of war is pretty high. And Australia and Canada, they are those one who believe in human value and the sign, the human right charter, uh, human right charter, right? And and and, and, yeah. the, uh, and the UN Convention on the Refugees. So if someone comes here and they are from a war-torn country and the countries are war, they may refuse. So they minimize the risk by rejecting you straight away before giving you the visa. Okay. That's a advantage we don't have. That's why we need peace. So India have done it successfully even here. It's not only alone where you are, not only in Canada. They have done it. Yeah. They have a vibrant community. They celebrate uh, Diwali. I, I think you would have seen it. They, they, they yeah, we just had Diwali recently. Yeah. Oh yes, uh, <laughs> they celebrate everything. So they have done it successfully, and I think yeah. that may even work better for us. One that those linkages are established, it's easy for the grandmother to talk to the children in the dinka. Then you being tempted to throw in an English word, you'll be tempted as a parent. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah. Um, maybe let's get to this part then. Um, because of time, I don't want to keep you too long. Um, what would be your parting shot to our people in the diaspora and back home in Africa in terms of peace, education, and business? Speak to them something about that. Uh, correct. Um, the last part, and, and we have been having a nice conversation, is this. Personally, I'm looking forward to uh, to go home at some stage. We in the diaspora has an advantage. We have to home. We have the motherland and we have this. So, and home is always home. It is the migrant that have always, the, the first generation immigrant are always the first one that build up their nations. That's how Israel was built. That's how Vietnam mm-hmm. is being built. That's how Philippines is being built. That is how Japan after the war is being built. The first generation immigrant always go home. Second generation, they don't go. Your children, my children, some will go, but on average, on average, majority of people who go back home are the first generation immigrant. They're the one that has connection with their homeland. I have connection with my village. My children, yeah, yeah, they would know. Yeah, oh, okay, we are from that. Oh, that's fine. But th- there's no serious yeah. connection. You can talk to them, they will know their identity, but that doesn't mean they will be attracted as easily as you would be. All right. So yeah. my parting shot okay. is this. If we want to continue to enjoy the benefit of having connection with the land and enjoy it better, it is only when our children know our language and know their roots. That's the only way they could connect. Uh, also, if that country is not enjoying relative peace, then you will not visit. There's nothing beneficial for you to have a country that you call home that is in turmoil. So let the diaspora be the champion of peace, okay? A bad peace is better than no peace. That's one thing. A bad peace is always better than a state of war. Bad peace can be improved, but war is always damaging. Why am I saying so? The country is in political economics turmoil, whatever appear to be a peace when things are calm calmness is not does not necessarily mean there is peace if, if if people cannot roam freely in their own country if if i cannot just go now and live comfortably among the gay people then there's no peace okay just because the, we have a government doesn't mean there is peace a peace has to be enjoyed within the the grassroots and that peace can come if we all campaign. We can be the best ambassadors and and be the best people to preach peace because we are enjoying the proof of peace where we are. It's just on, because Canada is at peace, Australia is at peace, that's why we are Yeah, Who can migrate now to Ukraine? Ukraine was a, among the past world nations. But can anybody migrate mm-hmm. to Ukraine? You cannot because it is torn. <laughs> yeah, there's no I'm, peace. Part, yeah, by all. yeah, so... Um, what I'm saying is, is the, the diaspora has a lot to do. The war that is happening in our country, diaspora always have a contribution, either politically to motivate or to preach peace. And I think we can preach peace much better than any other things. Uh, okay. Yeah. How about business? Yes. Um, Jack Ma. Jack Ma is the founder of Alibaba. Yes. This is what Jack Ma said. 
Jack Ma has stated that he said, if there is anywhere the world should watch where the next billion will come from to fuel the world is Africa. Okay? Mm -hmm. Now, when it comes to South Sudan, the only limiting factor here is, 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 is war. So if there is peace, yeah. every sector of economy can always perform well in South Sudan. Mm -hmm. If you go to the street of Juba, Anybody selling a Bombay by 9 a.m., that Bombay is sold, is snapped. Yeah. That's mean from the agriculture to someone selling meat at the butchery to someone mm -hmm. selling milk, everything that is in South Sudan can generate income. Why? Because any country that is always coming out of war is gone. Uh, there's nothing else it can do because it's already down. So the only way is to go up. And you, uh, yeah. you, you make good impact in a country that is growing. Mm -hmm. So there is opportunities for the business. Yes, there is a bit of challenges, but I think let people prepare. Let the diaspora countries where we are become yeah. the launching part. That's the word I use. Use Canada as okay. your launching part. Australia, US, UK, wherever you are, go back home at some stage and see, you don't have to abandon where you are. Of course, we continue to pray for peace in Canada, in Australia. We want to enjoy peace where we are. But there's nothing like home. You you, you feel the true daddy, the son of so-and-so, the son of... You see, has anyone ever told you that in um, Canada? No. I, no, I, no, no. I, I interact with indigenous people, and they call this one their mm. country, the aborigines. They say this is the mm. country of Nunga, the country of great mm. so-and-so. So the country of the great so and so, daddy so and so, that that sense of belonging is the main thing that always drives some people back. Yeah, I I have um maybe just uh, an idea. If we take our brothers from Torit, say from Terekeka, and from Bor, even from Rumbek, from the you know lakes, the wrestlers. We take them to Senegal. Do you think South Sudan will win that much in wrestling? <laughs> so you are talking about the Madingos. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, Our well of brothers from Dakar. Yes, yes. The Madingos. I think the thing about wrestling is this. The thing about wrestling is um, wrestling is always about um, tactic. Yes, physical okay. strength matters. You see, mm -hmm. I've just watched the way the Mandingos wrestles. Yeah. I know our brothers from uh, Mundari, uh, yeah. from Dinka, from Latuka, by the way. Mm -hmm. Latuka are serious yeah. wrestlers. So there the, are the four, five communities that wrestle in South Sudan. The Latuka, yeah. the Mundari, yeah. Uh, yeah. The, the Dinka. Uh, yeah. the, uh, the, Nub the, 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 the Nubians. The Nuba, yeah. So these four groups, the Nubian wrestles seriously. The same to the Latuka, okay? Yes, yeah. uh, differences yeah. in the style, but it's the same games. Now, yeah. if you let them play the Madingos in Dhaka, I think, I think the yeah. Madingos depend on size rather than the tactic. <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, so I think our brothers kind of would win them. Yeah. It okay. will be a very difficult match to predict, but <laughs> I think it will be interesting what we have a chat with the with the Madingos uh, and see. Okay, hmm. but but you know they are actually um, the guys in Senegal. Some of their clans are the same clans we have in Upper Nile. The the, the research by Sheikh Anta Diop. If you get a chance, read his books. He did a big research on the cultural and, and, and structural setup of their communities in Senegal, which are the same Gajak and Gajok in, in Upper Nile. So it's basically the same people. Their names are the same, the Dieng, all those. So... Hmm. I, it is, yeah, it's a good idea. Really so yeah. are you saying the Madingos in, uh, in Senegal, they have the Gajuk, yeah. the Gajak, pretty much the setup like what we have in the Upper Nile? 
Yeah. Same clan. I, I, I would appreciate. Uh, yes, send me the title. I didn't get the name well, but there is one research yeah. which I read, and the Dinka, uh, particularly the Dinka and the Nuer, are connected mm. to certain um, the language group in West Africa. Uh, I don't know yeah. why they are called the Madingos, but yeah. uh, there is that uh, Nilot. Uh, they they appear more to be Bantus, but the way they behave, they behave like yeah. Nilots in a way. Yeah. So, so maybe so there's, there's a lot of commonalities between uh, us and our brothers in the West. Yeah. So I'm um, I'm yeah. thinking the, the Madingos could be a good match to watch, eh? <laughs> yeah. The wrestling between the, the Mundari and the, uh, the Dinkas and Latukas and Nuva again in the Madingos would be really good yeah, one. Yeah, I no. never thought of it, but no, la- last time they said, you know, South Sudan beat them in basketball because we brought a lot of Americans to the team. So maybe in wrestling they might beat us and they'll feel good. <laughs> but I feel like there's a lot, a lot more we can talk, but yeah, we'll have you back some other time. Thanks, Daddy. Yeah, le- le- I have two segments for questions. I I call the first one the three questions. Okay. Are you ready? Go on. In Chinua Achebe's book, Things Fall Apart, mm-hmm. who was Amalinze the Cat? Amalinde the cat, was it not the Okonkwa, the guy who never been fallen by anybody? Yes, he was Okonkwa's uh, rival. Ah, oh, so Amalinde the cat was Okonkwa rivals. Yes. We yes, had yes. things fall apart, I think, uh, was it part of the set book in, um, in KCSE in 2002, uh, 2003? I'm not sure. but Oh, okay. I, no, no, it, it, that was a man of the people. A man of the people, Yes. I think yeah. I, I Okonkwo, read Sing Fall Apart a long time ago, yeah. But, yep, yeah, go on. Yeah. Okonkwo was well known throughout the nine villages, you know. And so Amalinze the cat was, yeah, was, yeah, he was beating people before and his back could not touch the ground. So Okonkwo threw him. Yes, yes, yes. So so that's, that's, that's the first one. So you got it anyway. So number two, who wrote the who who wrote the book Not Yet Uhuru? Not yet Uhuru. Uh, I think it was Mose Jumbo Kenyatta. You are a bit close. You are friend. Oh, not yet Uhuru. Would it be, be because I I think it's it's, it's not Odinga, is it? Uh, Uginga Uginga. Yeah. Jaramogi, Oginga, Oginga. Yeah, Oginga, Oginga, because he's the guy who makes sure the, the uh, Kafanguri of the six must be released before you. Yeah. Otherwise, he had the opportunity to take over uh, the the first prime minister, but he refused. Yeah. Actually, okay. he was the first prime yeah. minister when the other guy became the president. So, yeah. So, number three. How many chapters are there in the book of Genesis? Uh, in the book of Genesis, 50. I think okay, yeah, you, you know your Bible, yeah, yeah, you're correct, yeah, because I, I, the reason I remember it if you read from 48 all the way to 50, yeah, it is about occupation, <laughs> specializations, okay. <laughs> okay, 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 you're very technical from, from a very biblical side, <laughs> so but <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah, you're correct. And there's uh, 1,533 1, verses in the whole book. Yeah, and that is... Yeah. Yeah, that is a lot in the Bible. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. This is the second segment now. I call it Rapid Fire. Okay. Don't worry, I'm not going to ban you. It's either or. Paperback or ebook? Paperback. Okay, water or wine? Water. Old Testament or New Testament? New Testament. Oligamy or monogamy? Mm, d- d- depend. You have to choose one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
it. Pass. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. I'll, I'll give you for that. Okay. School uniforms or casual wear? Uh, cultural wear. Okay. Yeah. That's it, uh, Dr. Jack. I really take this time just to appreciate you for taking your time to sit down with me. Thank you, Daddy. Um, what those yeah. questions are anthropological in nature? <laughs> no, I, I tried to make them educational, but also, you know, biblical. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah. Yeah, I've been great yeah, chatting I, to I, you. Yeah. Yeah, I really appreciate this, uh, Brother Jack. Um, if people want to enroll with Dufico or people want to reach the great PhD holder, uh, Dr. Jack, how can they get to you? We we have a we have a website, but uh, I will I will share the website within your within the WhatsApp or so we have okay. the website and okay. the contact would be there. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. And then how about you personally? Those who may be interested uh, they, in learning more. My name is on um, social media, Jack Duanya Jack. Okay. LinkedIn, Jack Duanya Jack. Uh, okay. same on Twitter. So I'm, I maintain the same uh, name across. So I just have my real names on all the social media handles. Yeah. Okay. And yeah. for us on Kayamba VM too, I have a platform where I normally share ideas. Yeah. Oh, you, you have a platform, right? Yep. Kayamba FM. It's not, uh, Kayamba FM. Yep. What motivated that name? Kayamba is a, is a Mundari word, but uh, oh. it, it, it was a white, nice bull owned by my father. Oh, okay. So, okay. yeah, so my father nickname is Kayamba. Oh, I, I thought you, you, you meant the Swahili Kayamba, you know, the instrument. No, no, no. It's, it, this is a Mundari okay. word. Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. But uh, some yeah, Kenyan confuse the thing that is there uh, is is is, is kayamba the instrument from the cause. The thing is, it's a pokomo yeah. instrument, the kayamba. Is it pokomo? Or yes. what? Yeah. Uh, I can't even remember. Long time. I think it's pokomo. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much, Doctor Jack, for sitting with uh, down with me. Um, please pass our greetings to the family in Australia, and we hope to talk some more sometime next. You know, next time. Thank you, Daddy, and continue with the good work. Yes, I'm more than happy to to listen to some more of the Sit with Daddy episodes. Yeah, uh, share with me the link uh, of your podcast, please. And uh, yeah, yes, uh, thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. I'll share them with you. Our first episode will be premiering on the 23rd of December this year, so there's more coming. Oh, okay. So you you are recording them and you will start premiering them later. Yes, yes. Thanks, you, Daddy. Good, good yeah, work. Thank you. Yeah. Oh. I am the goat, so take it easy. Take it easy. Greatest of all time, and if it's a wheezy, my the Dukulana has the other busy. Yeah, I'm alive in fire. Maybe die in a hiding in higher up. As cool, you carry tires. I'm a duck, and that's too high. Let's get expired. My school, I'm lucky. I'm a Zayaki.